Nothing like some hot tea on the lake on a cold December afternoon. Welcome back everybody. As you can tell, it's a little chilly out today on the lake. It is December 2020. And today I think I'm going to go over some basics of the Nikon F100 film camera. Now for today, it looks, looks like it's about 80-85% overcast. A little chilly. It's about 31 out. It's uh, probably between 3 and 5 mile an hour winds. So for right now, I'm kind of tucked into the weeds. If you've never seen the F100, I have it on my Sigma 150 to 600 right here. Kind of looks like this. It's about the size of your typical mirrorless looking body. To be honest, I kind of wish Nikon would put the mirrorless Z bodies into something like this, but the ones they have now aren't too bad. But anyways, What's neat about this camera, it was released in, I believe, 1999, so maybe not this one specifically, but it's about 20 years old. It has, for a 20 year old film camera, it has the specs you'd imagine of like an entry DSLR right now. It has, I believe, six or seven focus points on it. It can do autofocus itself. Autofocus continuous tracking the track a subject across the frame It can do four and a half frames per second Without the grip you can get a vertical grip for it if you want it has the contacts pins on the bottom With that you'll get five frames per second huge half frame upgrade You can buy the grip for about probably 50 bucks on eBay And obviously they don't make them anymore, but the options there if you really wanted it on the front, probably can't see it too well, on the front lower left here, you have your manual focus, single focus, or continuous tracking. Then your tracking is done with this plus minus on the back. So really how I view it is you do C plus, continuous tracking across the frame on the back. And another cool feature that if you shoot a lot of film that you would enjoy is it has auto rewind on it so as soon as you're done with your roll it'll automatically rewind the whole roll of film for you it does have a diopter on the back so you can change up for you know people to have glasses and whatnot you can do single shot push this button down single shot continuous shot continuous silent shot then you have your timer too they can you can also do bracketing on it you have your iso button it does read the barcode, DXO barcode, on the uh, on the film canister. If you'd rather have it automatically decide what film ISO you're using, and then you have your bracket button up here, and to rewind your film, you have to press this red button and this other red button at the same time. If you don't have it set to auto rewind, you have your different modes. If you want, press the mode up here. You can do shutter, program, manual, aperture, all that stuff. Usually, I set the aperture because it's a film camera and it has pretty decent uh, exposure meter built in. Then on the side, you have your different types of metering. Matrix, spot, and center. Usually, if I'm shooting animals, I put it on a spot metering. That way you only expose for the bird or the animal. Whatever you're going for, sports, whatnot. Then you also have illuminated buttons. So if you move the on switch over to the right and let go, it illuminates the top LCD, not the buttons. My mistake. It's not that advanced, but it's pretty cool. And one of, another nice feature about it is it's a film body that has autofocus continuous that supports VR in your lenses. A lot of older film bodies, well, you can get autofocus, but most of them you don't get uh, VR support for your lens. And you can shoot any lens on this from like the older AIS lenses till the newer G lenses and whatnot. Pretty much anything modern for the F mount, it'll take and work flawless. 
and on the left side I don't have my port covers but you have a 10 pin port and a 1 pin port for your uh, remote trigger if you wanted and it will take and accept to really any modern uh, accessories that you wish any remote flashes anything like that works great the only thing that I wish it did have is that I believe the more professional body the F5 has is it has a button here on the side so that if it's, this is in your bag it won't accidentally take a frame while it's in your bag the thing turns on and has something actually taps the uh, shutter button and then you also have your AF on button on the back if you want to do back focus back button focus I don't use that myself but it's there and then you have your selector switch on the back if you want to select your autofocus points if you want to do single and like focus on one subject and recompose or compose your shot move the focus point to where you want to focus and do it that way too now for today we are going to be using Fuji Pro 400H in this shot hopefully we get something it is December there's not a lot of birds maybe some geese and whatnot if we get lucky not really for I did see a hawk on the way in so we'll see how that goes but to load your film if you're not in a hurry it's not too bad just take it out of your canister take the top off then on the side here there's a button you have to push then you just slide this down at the same time so really you can just press with your one finger and slide the whole thing down pops the back off it's actually a very modern interior for a film camera it doesn't have the greatest dust seals on the back side that's one of the biggest complaints as you can see it is kind of dusty a little gross and another thing this camera is made of magnesium it is very durable you have a hard time hurting it to be quite honest but it is not technically weather sealed so just something to think about so to load your film easiest thing to do feels like this with the uh, little nub on the bottom drop it into the left side Kind of hard to do this with my glasses fogging up a little and then all you have to do is pull your tab over put on the sprocket where this red light not light red dot is pull it across just tuck it in there like that not for fancy close it then all you have to do is turn the camera on and then press the shutter button once automatically advances and takes you to the first frame and you're ready to go now like any other modern film camera it does have an LCD it tells you how many frames you got left or what frame you're on technically and uh, if you load the film wrong and it doesn't reach the sprocket and any analog film cameras everyone's done it at least once you will shoot 36 rolls you'll rewind the whole thing You'll mail it in or develop it home and it comes out blank because it didn't reach the other sprocket and you basically wasted a whole roll of film. But with this, they'll say EE on there for error and that just means that it didn't take up on the other spool and you can open it back up, retry, and it'll tell you when it's on there. So that's actually pretty cool. It beats my uh, AE1 for that. But it is an automatic camera if you want full manual and you don't want any options whatsoever for auto focusing or film advance or auto rewind any of that stuff i probably wouldn't look at this camera but for me personally i don't know why you would go for that more for efficiency to shoot my film so that's why i got this and then one more quick note on the bottom here is where your batteries go it does take four double a these are just Duracell rechargeables. Uh, even with these, or if you got a really nice set of Enel loops, you could probably get 15, 20 rolls out of a single charge, which is pretty nice. And if you wanted, you could also get a uh, lithium ion battery pack for this. But 
I haven't seen too many of them for sale because they're getting kind of older and they're not really made anymore. So personally, I just stick to the double A's and keep a charger in my bag, call it good. So since we're sh shooting 400 speed film today and it's slightly overcast, it should be okay. So we'll see how this turns out. This lens does go to f6.3. Settings right. 10 meters infinite for focusing. Put the regular OS on. My custom's off. I have to reverse the uh, lens hood here. We'll see what see what we get. Of course. can't see anything with this mask on, so if I have to take that off, hopefully the wind dies down, it won't be too bad. So at f5, I'm getting about, because the aperture priority, and it is reading ISO 400 for the DX code. About 500, 1 500th of a frame, and if we extend it, now, see, in the sky, we're getting about 25 hundredths, but if anything's on the bank, I'm getting about two, one two fiftieth. With uh, spot metering. So that's one of the negatives for film cameras. If you're shooting an overcast day, you need high shutter, you're shooting wildlife, you should probably look around uh, like Portra 800, something like that. But um, yeah, it's just something you got to think about. It's not the easiest thing. It's like on digital, you just crank the ISO up and you're fine. But for film, I think it takes a little more skill, finesse, and thinking ahead. Not just because it's film, but you have less shots, makes you concentrate on what you're doing. And it actually, I think, makes you a better photographer overall. So we'll get paddling here. I'm at Moraine State Park. We're gonna go up the Hidden River and we'll see, we'll see what we find. Hopefully we get a couple good shots. Then later in the video, I will just uh, show some couple images I've gotten over the past two, three years. Maybe some bloopers of me dropping film all over the place with my GoPro. Because sometimes you just get that buck fever mentality and you just start freaking out and you can't concentrate on what you're doing. So we'll see how this goes. I just saw some uh, buffalo head. Here it comes. <laughs> quick enough. That's me not quick enough. The camera was fine. I already seen a flock fly by of about six or seven. I got a couple frames off before the uh, GoPro was able to turn on. So I guess we'll see in about a week or two for me, but a few seconds for you if they turned out good. ice on the lake already again in this little little bay some more mallards looks like a mating pair male and a female even though it's December so I've already taken 15 frames one thing about film wildlife being expensive there is a heron sitting here on the bank. Let's see if we can't float by this guy. 
he's back in the bush. He's acting like I don't see him. turned out, but it's still an awesome experience. Got another herring up here. Going before the storm because tomorrow we're supposed to get about six to eight inches of snow. see through the video the wind kind of died down felt like it warmed up a little bit so I did lose the face mask plus going with the wind you don't really feel the wind but anyways hopefully you've uh, you've seen how capable the f100 is why it's one of the best uh, more modern film cameras from Nikon and that it really is no slouch even for being 20 years old and for using modern glass on it, it can be unbelievably sharp and so much fun to shoot. That way you don't have to worry about spending time getting your film rolls right, loaded, all that stuff. It does almost everything for you and you can concentrate on getting the shot, framing, and worrying about not falling out of your boat while you do it. Or hiking and stumbling and dropping stuff everywhere. So, if I didn't cover anything that you wanted to know about, please put a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Any opinions are welcome. Let me know how you shoot your F100. And sadly, I, I really love this camera, but I think in the next few months I'm probably going to be putting it up for sale so that I can upgrade to the, the Z body, hopefully a Z7 II, for video and wildlife. So hopefully I can uh, give it off to somebody for a decent price and help them get their film photography going for themselves but if you like this video please give it a thumbs up like it comment down below as i mentioned subscribe to my channel and happy shooting